Welcome to AETCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Uh, Today is our topic of discussion, Acute Appendicitis from the chapter of Acute Inflammatory Conditions. So this is our outline of presentation. First, uh, anatomical note regarding the appendix. Definition for the appendicitis, what are the types we have in appendicitis, mainly uncomplicated and complicated state of appendicitis, causes and what are the clinical features, pathophysiology, what, is the, uh, what are the assessment point we will get in the appendicitis and then emergency medical uh, treatment, both pre-hospital and in-hospital, finally complication of the appendicitis. So, and then coming into anatomical note of appendix. So, appendix uh, means it is a finger like blind ended tube that is connected to the cecum. So, the two important things, first one it is like a finger like tubular portion. So, the appendix is a finger like tubular portion where it is connected means it is connected to your cecum. So, cecum means where it is cecum, cecum is a portion, it is a pouch where your uh, large intestine and then small intestine will come in contact. So, actually cecum is a part of our intestine, a large intestine, right. So, our uh, in this area where uh, which our uh, small intestine will comes in contact this is the area of cecum if you are dividing into abdomen in a four quadrant means exactly you will uh, that uh, our appendix will be in a right lower quadrant so this is the thing regarding the uh, appendix presentation or location how it will be the structure of the appendix and then the length wise it will be approximately two to four inches okay and then the it is regarding the anatomy coming into the uh, functionality or function or physiology of the uh, appendix is not fully understood anyway it's believed to play some role in the immune system and then some of them they are mentioning like uh, it is the storage back uh, for the some good bacteria so that is also some of the references on there and then this is what our cecum region here you have appendix and then this is the small uh, e ileum portion of your small intestine. This is the junction. Here only we have a uh, appendix. So, and then coming into other side, this is somewhat regarding the surgical anatomy. So, the position of your appendix. So, uh, assume this is the center, midline. Okay, this is the midline means it will be based on the ileal, uh, ileum we are dividing into pre-ileal, post-ileal. So, the position of it, your appendix will be in a 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock position. That is why I told this is considered, this one is a midline. So, midline means it is a 6 o'clock, 12 o'clock, okay, likewise. So, if the, based on the ileum, if it is placed in a 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock means it is called the pre-ileal, post-ileal. So, if it is in the pelvic bone means that is called the 5 o'clock position. So, the range that uh, uh, your appendix will be in a 5 o'clock position. So, if it is a 6 o'clock position means that is called a sub cecal. Cecum, this is the cecum area. So, below the cecum region that is called a sub cecal, 6 o'clock position and then retro cecal. Retro means above or uh, retro means away from that cecum that is called a retro cecal that will be in a 11 o'clock position. So, this is somewhat surgical anatomy related just for the knowledge you can remember. Then coming into our appendicitis, what is mainly appendicitis? So, mean wise, itis means inflammation. So, the inflammation of the appendix is called appendicitis. So, the most common condition, it requires prompt medical attention and surgical removal of the affected organ. Means, it is the one of the example for the surgical emergency related okay this is one of the example for the surgical emergency so appendicitis straightforward inflammation of the appendix that is called the appendicitis so common types as like we told we have a two major types one is a complicated second one is a uncomplicated appendicitis so complicated means what so uh, be, uh, because of that inflammation it will land up in a other complications like uh, your uh, gangrene formation or abscess formation or perforation. So, these are the complications that can arise because of the appendicitis. So, uncomplicated means there won't be any problem, there will be a uh, contained or confined only the appendix alone it will affect, that is called the uncomplicated appendicitis. So, what might be the causes? The exact cause for the appendicitis is often unknown. But uh, some of the suspected cause are that is the uh, obstruction of your outflow, outflow that is the one of the suspected cause or you can remember as a, a commonly believed to occur when the opening of the appendix is blocked. 
so we have a lumen from the appendix we have one lumen so whenever the pathway is blocked outflow is blocked automatically it leads to the inflammation that is the one of the thing so the what made with the blockage happens because of the stool so this is called the fecal lithiasis fecal lithiasis so lithiasis means stone so because of the fecal matter the stone is forming means there is a fecal lithiasis or fecolithiasis and then any foreign bodies and then tumors and then lymphoid hyperplasia so these are the some common uh, suspected cause for the blockage this is one of the reason for your appendicitis so what might be the pathophysiology again it is also too simple so we told the outflow will obstruct right so the outflow is obstructed means what will happen so whatever the secretion that is happening inside the appendix so remember appendix also one of the organ here also we have a mucus cells so everything so the mucus cell will secrete some amount of mucus secretion so so whenever the outflow is obstructed so the whatever the secretion that is happening inside that your uh, appendix that will stag uh, that will stagment inside the appendix itself mean the same time so whatever the content before getting the blockage that is enter also that will stay in your appendix alone so over the time what will happen the appendix will stretch and then the capacity of the appendix will exceed so mean the same time automatically it will over the time if you are not treating means automatically it will burst so the ideal concept is the uh, fecal lithiasis or some other things is obstructing the pathway so that intraluminal pressure is increasing so mean the same time over the time if you are not treating that uh, one means it will automatically burst or perforate so this is the thing happening in the pathophysiology one more additional thing is appendiceal vascular insufficiency means so whenever that uh, pressure is increasing inside that lumina the resistance to the blood flow also will increase so your blood flow that is the resistance to the blood flow will also increase thereby it will leads to the gangrenic changes or ischemic first it will because of the resistance your arterial or venous blood flow will affected and then thereby it leads to the ischemia all the time infarction and then finally it leads to the gangrene also so ideally so if the perforation uh, occurs means it leads to the inflammation uh, overall that uh, abdominal region and then bacterial proliferation also can occur and then assessment point so we have to remember the three stages of the appendicitis first one is a early stage okay third one is a rip state third fourth one is sorry third one is second one is a rip state third one is a your perforation state okay so early stage mainly the person will present with a uh, mild discomfort over the peri umbilical region so the problem will be in a, or the pain or discomfort will be in a peri umbilical region and then uh, the common other gastrointestinal inflammatory signs like nausea vomiting anorexia low grade fever and all will be there in the early stages so once if you are not treating means then it will second uh, enter into the second stage there the person will develop somewhat the pain will migrate into the right lower quadrant here only the pain will uh, move on into the right lower quadrant again if we are not treating means so the here the in second stage the pain intensity of the pain will somewhat higher compared with your near compared with your early stages and then third stage is so again if you are not treating means what will happen so the intraluminal pressure will increase automatically over the time because of the exceed capacity automatically it will burst so if it is bursting means that is called a perforation state so in perforation what will happen so so in pain wise the person may feel some uh, some set of uh, subtle changes in the pain means there will be a reduction in the intensity of the pain because of whatever the pressure that is releasing right so because of that the person may feel some amount of relief in pain the intensity of the pain will in, uh, decrease mean the same time what will happen means perforation so whatever content that is present inside the intraluminal now it will spread all over the peritoneal region so all over the peritoneal region if it is spreading means what will happen so automatically it will leads to the peritonitis and then uh, some other uh, splinting respiration everything will occur in the perforation stage this is the three stages for the your appendicitis so the rupture will happen the infectious material will enter into the all uh, entire abdominal cavity 
in this stage pain will become a generalized throughout the abdomen so in the second stage in first stage it will be confined or it will be in a localized area now in the third stage it will uh, spread over the all over the abdomen the diffuse abdominal tenderness will be there okay the main important thing here is a rebound tenderness is a sign of perforation of the appendix with uh, resultant peritonitis so rebound tenderness means what tenderness means we know so while pressing the person will feel the pain rebound means what while releasing that is the rebound right so if you are palpating over that some uh, specific area means in right lower quadrant if you are palpating means so you are giving pressure means uh, you have to give a pressure and then you have to release so while releasing the person will have a more amount of pain compared with an while pressing that is called the rebound tenderness in other name for that rebound tenderness is called the blumberg sign so i think in next slide i have uh, this is called the blumberg sign or rebound tenderness so as like i told there is a pain um, upon removal of pressure rather than the application of pressure to the abdomen so this is what we call the rebound tenderness it is a indicative for the either peritonitis or appendicitis so one more sign we'll get or uh, one more point we'll get that is called the mcburney's point mcburney's point is nothing but so we have to uh, imagine that's a one imaginary line between the umbilicus and then anterior superior iliac spine of your uh, pelvic bone so if you are measuring so exactly the person will complain the pain in this particular region so that particular region only we have a cecum or appendix so what will have so where it will be means if you are measuring from anterior superior iliac spine means it will be like a one third distance between the anterior superior iliac spine to the umbilicus okay this is a one third distance from the anterior superior iliac spine so if you are measuring distance from the umbilicus means it will be like a two third distance between the umbilical and the peri umbilical sorry um, uh, umbilical and the your anterior superior iliac spine so exactly the person will complain the pain over that region that dotted area that is called the mcburney's point so it is not necessary to the all the person some rather time it can occur management wise in pre hospital and then in hospital so pre hospital what is the major things so again remember the three things three stages in early stages what we need to what we need to do means early stages it is not like a more intensity of pain the pain of the intense intensity of the pain will be in a more lesser manner so easily we can <coughs> sorry easily we can manage with an nsaid drugs or uh, the, uh, so here the pain will be not uh, not at much like that means so you can simply manage with an nsaids so that is a symptomatic management or else the person if present with any vomiting or fever means based on that we have to treat in a symptomatical manner that is the early stages second stage what we can do means in second is what is happening here the risk of perforation will increase here the person easily can get a rupture so we have to think about it again here also the pain management is one of the thing mean the same time we have to transport to the specific uh, facility uh, as much as possible that is the second stage third stage this is a more complicated stage here we have to think about your perforation so perforation means we told there may be a chance of sepsis septic shock and then you have to manage about the pain related so pain also here a somewhat lesser manner only we have to think about the sepsis and then septic shock mean the same time here the risk of peritonitis so in peritonitis most important thing we have to remember is a splinting respiration means so we know abdominal muscles are rectus abdominis and then uh, so those are the things that takes part in the exhalation and then uh, mainly the these are major muscle uh, they are participating in the exhalation so whenever these muscle get inflamed means so whenever the person is taking breathing they will feel pain or discomfort in the abdomen so for that reason what will happen the person won't take that much adequate amount of breathing those this is also so because of that peritonitis it can affect your respiratory part also so these are the things also we have to keep in mind so we can administer in supplemental oxygen or based on the situation we can manage 
So sepsis, septic shock also we have to keep in mind in majorly what we have to focus here is in hypotension and then the hypotension we have to replace with the volume resistance and we have to dry. If it is not uh, subsiding means refractory of hypotension means then we have to move on the your uh, vasoactive agents like noradrenaline, adrenaline, vasopressin. So this is the three things you have to keep in mind in the pre-hospital region. Coming into in-hospital, uh, what we are doing in ED means here also absolute bed rest and then nilper oral. Nilper oral NPO because for the, you are, if you are planning for the appendectomy means that is for the NPO. So, and then IV fluid supplementals, analgesic and then antibiotics you can go for. These are the antibiotic choices and then mainly in, in hospital also we are dividing the person into complicated and uncomplicated. If it is necessary means if the complicated cases and all we have to treat the complication along with we are planning for the appendectomy. So this way we told it is one of the example for the surgical emergency. So what are the indications for the appendectomy? First one acute appendicitis and then recurrent appendicitis mucosal of appendix. Mucosal means so there will be a swelling of your uh, appendix because of the increased mucus production or because of the accumulation of mucus that is called the mucosal appendix carcinoma tumor is uh, one of the reason for the appendectomy what are the complications that will arise means gangrenous appendicitis so the gangrenous because of the vascular insufficiency so we told because of the increased pressure in that intraluminal region there will be a resistance will increase for the blood flow it leads to the ischemia infarction gangrene and then thrombosis of the appendiceal artery and veins and then perforation finally it's lead to the peritonitis. So do your best shalom.